In fact, I referred this uh, matter about uh, Venerable Nyanasar and his chairmanship of the One Country, One Law Commission. Similarly, there was another commission appointed, a commission to uh, look at the dangers posed to the archaeological sites in the eastern province, as if only the eastern province has archaeological sites which are in danger of being encroached. And that particular commission did not have a single member from any minority community. It was packed all majority community people. And such was the action of the uh, former president. Uh, at the very outset, uh, before coming to my comments on the president's uh, throne speech to parliament, I would like to <clears throat> remind the House a matter, uh, some matters which I have brought to his notice when he met us as party leaders at separate meetings uh, he had been conducting for the last few days regarding the all-party conference, all-party uh, government and all types of uh, suggestions that he has made. Uh, I would like to refer the attention of this House uh, to the uh, sufferings of the people, particularly both in the uh, coastal areas of the country, the fishermen, as well as the farmers when it comes to the harvest of the yala cultivation. Now, I was in the eastern province a few days ago. Now the harvest is on in, the, in those areas. For harvesting machines to operate, we need diesel. As a matter of fact, in the Ampara district, almost 400,000 litres of diesel is necessary, whereas only 100,000 litres have been issued. This has resulted in the entire harvest getting destroyed unless diesel is made available almost immediately. So I would like to uh, bring to the attention to the Honourable Minister the urgent need to supply diesel for the purposes of harvesting. On top of that, elephants are already uh, roaming the area, destroying the crop, and country is talking about a food shortage in the future. So it is absolutely necessary for us to attend to this particular issue, and I would urge the uh, Honourable Minister in charge of uh, energy and petroleum to kindly look at this issue and make sure that this balance, almost 300 litres of diesel that is necessary for harvesting is to be uh, supplied without any further delay. With that, I would also like to bring to the notice of the same minister the requirement of kerosene for the purposes of the fishermen in those areas. Today, kerosene is sold almost at 80 rupees per litre, whereas it is now sold in the black market for almost 1,200 rupees. For a fisherman to go out with his boat for fishing for a, per day, they require about 40 litres. Whereas they are now compelled to buy from the black market at very exorbitant prices. And therefore it is absolutely necessary that sufficient amount of kerosene is made available to the fishermen in those coastal areas of the country, particularly I had been visiting some of these areas recently, particularly in Oliville and uh, Kalmuni areas, where this complaint had been brought to my notice, and I have brought it to the attention of His Excellency the President uh, as well when we met him a few days ago, and I would like that uh, this matter be given urgent attention, and this, uh, these issues of the fishermen as well as the farmers uh, be attended without any further delay. Having said that, <clears throat> now I must uh, congratulate uh, uh, the President on his election uh, through this House to be the uh, President of this country. Though we did not support him, we did see in his speech several laudable aspects regarding which the entire country um, is quite satisfied with. But however, there are some areas, now before coming to um, certain criticisms regarding the conduct of government under his leadership, I would like to um, refer to this part uh, where he says, ever since I entered into politics, I wanted to create a society with a Sri Lankan identity without these divisions, to create a nation where children of one mother can live in harmony. I suffered political defeats due to regular engagement in this exercise. It was criticized by extremists because of my continued stand against racism and bigotry. Some political parties slandered me as a racist. However, I did not deviate from my principle. I will not deviate from that policy. 
This is a matter regarding which I also would vouch that the president, when it comes to racism and bigotry, he had never been on their side. And therefore, I'm sure uh, those who supported him must be finding him a very strange bedfellow uh, because the, he is surrounded by people who have been subscribing to this type of racism and bigotry. Huh? They appointed presidential commissions headed by, you know, Buddhist priests were supposed to be uh, exercising the same bigotry. In fact, I referred this uh, matter about uh, Venerable Nyanasara and his chairmanship of the One Country, One Law Commission. Similarly, there was another commission appointed, a commission to uh, uh, look at the dangers posed to the archaeological sites in the eastern province, as if only the eastern province has archaeological sites which are in danger of being encroached. And that particular commission did not have a single member from any minority community. It was packed with all majority community people. And such was the action of the uh, former president. N none of us uh, want this type of uh, suffering that can befall one of our heads of state. But then he had turned a blind eye to many of our very earnest pleadings regarding this. Similarly, what happened regarding the, uh, even the issue of uh, uh, COVID-19 was used to demonize the Muslims. Demonize the Muslims. What happened to them? I do not want to recount. We have to, spoken ad nauseam in this house about uh, the sufferings that we had to undergo as a result of that, that bigotry and racist policies of uh, the, that regime that has now been somewhat replaced, at least nominally, or a symbolic change has happened. But I hope His Excellency the President will be allowed the freedom to uh, try and implement the policies and programs that he has so laudably laid out in his uh, throne speech. So having congratulated him for that, let me also come to another uh, particular point. And now, I would like to talk about a serious issue in the Navalapiti area. The floods that has affected the many thousands of people. Hun almost seven 700 families have been displaced. Almost 100 odd families have lost their uh, houses. They had to be found alternate uh, uh, housing facilities. In fact, I had a meeting with the Divisional Secretary of Navalapitiya. Honorable Velu Kumar accompanied me to see some of these areas. Labu Akotua in Navalapitiya is totally destroyed. Almost 100 houses are, have totally gone underwater. And this has happened every year for the last five years repeatedly. Every year during the monsoon season, these areas have been inundated. Now, there is one uh, school. Al you have two more minutes, uh, Honorable Member. You have two more minutes. Yes. Al Azhar Mahavidyalaya Salem Bridge. Two buildings have virtually up to the roof level. Water has come and people, uh, the children had to, uh, were unable to use the building for several months after the, after the floods. This has happened repeatedly for five years. And therefore, it's an absolute necessity that we provide them, some, provide them alternate buildings, school buildings as well as housing facilities for them. In fact, when I met the, met the president, I pleaded with the president to make a visit to those areas and see the inundation that has caused. Now, there is Sivasami Totam, Ovita, Mahakumbara, Jayasundara. These are all areas which have been seriously affected by these floods. And hundreds of people have been uh, displaced and their the houses have been destroyed. Though some normalcy has returned, it is important for the Divisional Secretary now to identify some state land and provide the necessary uh, uh, habitation for them to find alternate accommodation. So this matter I have brought to the attention of uh, His Excellency the President. Now finally, I would like to just refer to a very, very uh, irresponsible allegation that we made against the President of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka. Mr. Salia Piris, who is the President of all of us, who are all, there are several lawyers in this chamber. Today I saw several members of the government, including I was surprised to hear Dr. Uh, Ramesh Patirana, member who, uh, who I respect. And he too is making an allegation that uh, uh, Mr. Salia Piris has got, I mean, in, in fact, he did not refer to him by name. Huh? 
But then his uh, uh, reference was quite obvious that he had gone down to the south to defend some drug conflict, convict. Because any, you, as, a, as a lawyer, when you represent a client, uh, you, you, are, you cannot... Uh, you, you Thank you, member. Thank you for your contribution. Your time is over. So his, now, all these people have got unnecessarily uh, disturbed by the, uh, the courageous stand that the Basel in Sri Lanka has taken when, it, the, when the protest came up. When the, the Thank you. Right, right for people to protest and the, the manner in which uh, the uh, operation was taking place, people had their legal right to get up and Thank you. Thank they did. Thank you and very much. I had to. Bazos in Sri Lanka acted very responsibly. That Thank you, sir. The history of the Bazos. I had to call the and next speaker. Having criticized the Bazos in president, I would, I would not, uh, I would like to correct I, that position. And I heard. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Rohit the next speaker is. I'm sorry, sir. I had to cut you off. Next speaker is. I would like to. Mr. Jayanta Veer Singh.